glory, glory, glory. And I give you all the honor, honor. Hallelujah. Come on and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Come on and bless the Lord today. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. Lord God, we just thank you. Hallelujah for being here today. We just love the Lord. We give honor to God who's the head of our life, to our pastor, Frederick and Adrena Thomas. We just thank God for them. Come on and clap your hands for our leaders. Amen. How many feel good today? Hallelujah. We're just going to go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you today. God, we honor you today, Lord God, for waking us up this morning. God, we thank you for life, health, and strength today. And God, we ask, Lord God, that you come to us today, Lord God. God, that you meet us, Lord God. Meet every need today, Lord God. As we worship you today, Lord God, we give ourselves to you, Lord God. God, as we honor you, Lord God, we offer up our praise to you, Lord God. God, as we worship you today, Lord God, and I thank you, Lord God, that you've given us strength, Lord God. God, even in this hour, Lord God, of the pandemic, Lord God, God, that you're keeping our families, Lord God. God, that you're keeping us well and healed, Lord God. And we ask, Lord God, that any that's out there, Lord God, God, that's bereaving, Lord God, those that are in pain and on their sick bed, God, we ask that you extend your grace and your mercy, Lord. God, and your healing power to them today, Lord God. God, even the ones in the sanctuary today, Lord God, you meet every need. God, those that are on Facebook Live, Lord God, and YouTube, Lord. God, we ask that you bless them today, Lord God. God, as they're in their homes, Lord God. God, that you send a word, Lord God, to lift them up, Lord God. God, that you send a word to heal and deliver them today. And God, we thank you, Lord God. We give you the praise. We give you the honor, Lord God, and as the worship team get ready to come. God, we ask that you bless them, Lord God. God, as the offering get ready to come, we ask that you bless this house. And God, as the word get ready to come, God, we ask that you feed our souls and pour into us today. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you and we give you all the glory and all the praise. Hallelujah. As our praise team get ready to come, come on and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on and stand on your feet in the sanctuary and give God some praise. Hallelujah. At home, come on and stand on your feet. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and clap your hands like this. Come on. If you know he has a great name and you love to praise it, come on. We love to call your name. It's something we cannot explain. That happens when we proclaim your great name. Your great name. We love to yeah. Oh, there's so much power in the 
Sister Natasha Horn, my wife, we are, we are here to give you guys some information, pull out your calendars real quick, and my wife has some information to share with you all, all right. and then we will go into our offer for this morning. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. What a blessing it is to be here today. All right. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice. Hallelujah. All right. Amen. Yeah. yeah. that tithe, those that give. That's a covenant you have with God. And God is faithful to keep his word. Right. What he said he will do, he will do. Right. So I challenge everyone that is a giver, everyone that is a tither, to make sure that you get in God's face and hold him to account. God, this is what you said in your word, so I'm expecting you to do something for me. Now, when you put that back on God, that's not pressure on God. God wants you to do that. He wants you to come to him believing and expecting something because he has made a covenant with you as a believer and you as his child that he will do something. He'll make room. He'll put you before men, great men, people that can put you in a place, place that you expect and have a desire to be in that you can't do for yourself. But because of your time, because of the covenant you have with your God, you should expect something greater even now. Amen? All right. Well, if you don't have a tithing envelope just yet, hold your hands up. Is it coming around? If you've already put your tithing and you're giving together, give you just a moment to get those filled out. Amen. A couple of ways to give. Honestly, you can give cash, give check, or money sign C O P, the number four, the letter U. That's in house and online. We thank you guys for joining us as well. Money sign C O P. The letter for the number U C O P for you. Amen. Got a few more right there.
so I'm going to repeat the announcements for some of the Facebook view, uh, viewers that may not didn't hear it. Uh, Sam and Sacred Grace Baby Shower will be January the 23rd. Please see Lady A to RSVP. And this is a co-ed shower. Please join us today for our first purpose fair at 1130. The church anniversary is January the 30th. Please see the flyer on Facebook for more details. Youth Sunday is January the 31st. Please remember your Bible books. If you haven't completed the in-house schedule and COVID release form, please do so today. Communion will be rescheduled. And also please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Church of Purpose Open. Man. All right, does everyone have a chance to give? Amen. We'll pray with you. Oh God, we thank you right now for those that have given this morning, oh God. We thank you for every believer. We thank you for every tither. We thank you for everyone that has given and offered you something, oh God. For those that did not have to give, oh God, we pray, oh God, that you would provide them with gifts so that they would give out of their hearts, oh God, and that you would show them the type of return that they can expect for those that will trust and believe you in giving so that they know that they can receive from you our highest power. We give you praise, we give you thanks, we give you honor for this day. And we trust and believe, oh God, that you're making a way for us right now, putting it before great men, scheduling us, oh God, before people that will propel, propel us into our next place. And we thank you in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on and stand on your feet and worship with us this morning. Hallelujah. We serve an everlasting God. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. Come on and bless the Lord this morning. Come on while you feel here. Hallelujah. I will see the goodness. 
Pray for somebody. I got a call this morning. And uh, we need to band together in prayer. Uh, that, that the healer that we teach and preach about, he'll be there. Yeah. All right? Yeah. If you came with somebody, I need you to hold their hand. And if you came by yourself, you can just lift it and put your hand on your heart. But what I need is for you to connect with us in prayer. Sing it for me, brother. Because we're going to already we're gonna give thanks. Father, I thank you right now, God, for what you're doing in this hour. I thank you, God, for what you're going to do. 
But Lord, I thank you for what your word declares concerning us. Lord, your word in Isaiah told us that by your stripes we are already healed. So I send the word of prayer, God, to Reverend Flowers, that you would touch his body. God, as we band together as a body, I believe what the word says, that if we would simply touch and agree, God, God, we can call those things as not as though they are. So, Father, I send a word, God, to his body. God, that you would go from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. God, that any ailment, God, the Bible says that there should not be sick among us, God. So, Father, we pray today that you are the healer that we preach and teach about. You, God, are the provider that we serve. So, today, God, I ask that you stand in the gap. And, Lord, we remind you of this faithful service, God, that there's nothing too hard for you. And, God, just like the centurion, God, I believe that you're going to do it for him today. Father, we trust God by faith that there's no distance in prayer. I ask right now that you strengthen his body, God, from the core of his spirit, God. Let the Holy Ghost become his comfort, God. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together and bless the Lord today. Man, I'm so glad to be in the house. I'm so glad to be in the house. I don't know what to do. Amen. I'm so thankful to see all of you. Amen. Let me get me something to drink right quick. And uh, Amen. Um, I, I want to say this before I get started. I want to wish Pops. He know who he is. He watch. Yeah. I want to wish Pops a happy birthday. That's my guy. Yeah. Yeah. He wasn't able to make it today. Uh, but his birthday was yesterday, and I want to say, hey, let me get up here. Hey, I love you. Happy birthday. Amen. Amen. That's my guy. Amen. All right. I want you guys uh, to do something for me real quick. Go ahead and get your Bibles and turn to Psalms 51 and 10. Uh, I got a word of the Lord that I want to give you today. Uh, the Lord changed my course on yesterday. I had something that I wanted to tell everybody, but the Lord shifted uh, my spirit on yesterday afternoon. I met a pastor from Nigeria. Um, was that last year? Last year, uh, when I went to Bishop Jakes' leadership conference in Tampa. And uh, we, we started talking and and I said, hey, man, I need a site so I can look at some of you guys' services. And what I did was I went out there in the last two days. All I could watch was their services. I was so amazed at the spirit of excellence. Not only that, the amount of word that they are putting out to the people in Nigeria. When I say uh, a part of me felt like I need to go to Nigeria for about a month. I just need to go hang out over there with them for about a month. I could not stop watching their services for two days. For two days straight, I could not stop. And I, I'm, I'm probably going to watch it when I go home tonight. But I said, Lord, there's a standard that I saw in the ministry over there that, um, that was once i seen it more relevant here at one time. I saw people that would get, y'all, y'all, I'm going to have to walk a little heavier today. I saw people got rebuked from the platform and then they, they didn't go leave and find another church. I watched how when they panned the camera around, everybody had pens and pads. It was almost like a, a child sitting at the table that hadn't ate in three days the way they were writing notes and so attentive to whatever that the uh, the pastor or the minister was saying. And you can literally feel the hunger through the screen. And I said, Lord, where did I miss it at? Because I remember when I first got saved, I could not get enough of the presence of God. I could not get enough of his word. I could not get enough of trying to be in the presence of God. And I thought about it. I said, Lord, you placed us in the first fruits fast. And I really want to embody this fast. 
And I said, Lord, what can I preach to the church today to help us embody what you're trying to take us into? And the Lord took me to Psalms 51 and 10. I'm going to read Psalms 51 and 10 through verses 13. I'm going to read it in the King James Version first. And then I'm going to turn around and read it to you guys in the easy read version. All right. Verse 10 says it like this. Create in me, this is David talking, a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Watch what verse 12 says. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. 13 says this. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Y'all remember on Tuesday night when I said what our assignment was to go out and teach them what God has commanded us? Now watch what the Easy Read Version says, how it says. Verse 10 says it like this in the Easy Read Version. God, create a pure heart in me. And make my spirit strong again. Don't push me away. Or take your Holy Spirit from me. Watch this. Verse 12 says this. Your help made me so happy. Give me that joy again. Verse 13 says. I will teach the guilty. How you want them to live. And the sinners We'll come back to you. I'm going to preach to you all very shortly today on a message. I need a reset. Put your hand over your heart and say, Lord, I need a reset. The word reset means to set a new and to adjust again after an initial failure. All right. A lot of times we think failure is a bad thing. When in actuality, if you don't fail sometimes, you don't really know where God can get you to. In the Latin, the word reset brings about in birth words like to expand or to grow. Can I tell you, it lets me know that as a believer, that there are certain seasons that if I don't hit the reset button, I can miss a chance to expand or broaden that which is in me and that that God is trying to get me to. Tap yourself on the shoulder, on the chest again and say, I need a reset. I need, a reset. I need God to set me anew. I need God to do some adjustments in me again. All right. That is why the scripture talks about old wine skins. They are dealt with from the inside out. Jesus was saying, I can't pour into anything that's not reset. You won't have the capacity. Let me rephrase that. We won't have the capacity to receive what God has in this season without a reset. With the old wine skins, this is what they did. They would take it, and back in that day, it was a bottle, but on the inside of the bottle, there was an old leather skin on the inside of it. That's what held the liquid inside of it, all right? And what would happen is that over a period of time, leather would tighten up and it would start to split. And as you start to pour into it, it would start to flow out because the leather had cracks in it, okay? So it could not retain what the pourer was trying to pour. Everybody see that? So what would happen is they would take the wine skin and they would flip it inside out. They would take it and flip it inside out and they would literally cure the leather. Reset or refashion the leather. And then they would flip it back in and now it's able to take what the poor can pull. So the context is I need to reset you from the inside so you can hold everything that I'm finna pour on you from the outside. I need to be able to pour myself into you and I need to reset some stuff inside of you so you can hold everything that I'm finna put on the inside of you. 
As we look at Psalms 51, 10 through 13, David speaks from his heart after the prophet Nathan came to him concerning his dealings with Bathsheba. The word create in the scripture means not only did it mean from the connotation of creating something from nothing, but it also meant reforming something that was existing. Watch this. Bathsheba, y'all finna get this one. Bathsheba was only a outward representation of what David struggled with internally. She was only an outward representation of what he was dealing with internally. Pastor, I don't get what you're saying. Temptations don't come from the outside in. They come from the inside out. I told y'all this before. You can never be tempted by anything you don't have a desire for. This is the reason why David was laying in his bed one night and he just couldn't get comfortable. Because what was in him needed to be comfort. David had, uh, I got tender ears in him, so I'm going to try to be as nice and neat <laughs> with this as I can. David had an itch that needed to be scratched with a felt <laughs> for the grown folk. And he could not get comfortable in his bed. And the Bible said his desire got so strong that he got out of his bed and he went to the rooftop. And the Bible said, that as he was on the rooftop, that he saw Bathsheba bathing in the window. This is the problem that when you don't handle your desires, you start looking for things that are below you. You start looking in windows that God never called you to look into. And watch this. Because you have a desire for it, the enemy will sit it there for you to see. And watch this. If you don't hit the reset button before you go to the roof, Guess what? The thing you saw in the window will come to your room. Watch this. Not because it wanted to come, but because you sent for it. That's the danger. Because if you never reset your desires, watch this. It, have a, it has a tendency to shift your destiny. I need you to catch that. If you don't shift your desires, it has a tendency now to shift your destiny. So on the heels of all of this, we find David saying, Lord, I was on the rooftop. I've been looking at stuff I ain't have no business looking at. And now I done made some decisions that I didn't want to make in my spirit, but my flesh did it. And now I'm all messed up to the point that when the prophet came and told him the story about Jerome, he was so wrapped up in his own desires, he didn't even know that he was the man that the prophet was talking about. That's a chance that in this season, if you don't hit the reset button, you could be a man in the thing that God wants to deliver you from, and you think it's for somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> Tap yourself, say, I need a reset. That's what this fast is all about, to help us hit the reset button. I knew I needed a reset. When I got a gorgeous wife laying in the bed with me to talk to, and I'm scrolling to see what everybody else is posting on Facebook. That's good, Pastor. That's good. That's good. When my son is at baseball practice, knowing I don't know how to play baseball, I should be watching the coach to make sure that I can go home and rehearse what the coach is teaching him. You know what I'm doing? I'm looking on Instagram. And the problem is, now I'm looking at false lives. People smiling, saying they got a healthy relationship, when they really don't. People posting stuff, standing by rental cars, <laughs> trying to make it seem like it's there. And all the while, you, we are striving to be like something that's not even real. When we really just need to hit the reset button, because what we're looking at, Ain't reality anyway. And guess what? You miss out on valuable things. Valuable memories that you can be making. So the Lord said, let's put the first part of our year aside. 
Yeah, you may want some fried chicken right now. <laughs> I'm finna pick on somebody. There's some Krispy Kreme donuts. <laughs> but watch this. The time that you could have spent driving to Popeyes, the time that you could have spent going to Krispy Kreme, that one minute, two minute, five minute that it may have taken you to get there, you could have put one petition before God that could shift the life of your children. But watch this. If you're not ready to hit the reset button, in other words, if you ain't ready for God to flip your skin inside out, when God get ready to pour in 2021, yeah, you may say, amen, Lord, I thank you. But watch this. It's going to ooze right out of you. You're going to amen it but not be able to retain it at the same time. That's the danger of not being able to hit the reset button. You will amen it and won't retain it. I've been there. Amen. Father, I thank you. It's coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And watch this. He will put it right in my presence. And I don't have the capacity to retain it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hit the reset button. Lord, set me anew. Lord, go back and adjust me where I failed at. That's the season we got to get in. That we can't be too proud to say, God, I missed the mark. I was looking at the service in Nigeria and I almost, I'm almost about to cry now. I said, God, I missed the mark. And I'm a pastor because I missed the purity of what the gospel is all about. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, sir. And at that moment, I started saying, Lord, reset me. Reset me, God, again. I need you to reset me because we put so much time we create habits that hinder us from getting to heaven. Yes, go ahead. And watch this. We create habits that hinder heaven from coming to earth. Yes, yes, yes. Never mind getting there. We can't even get it here because we won't reset. I started saying, Lord, if you look at it, I found out there's a thing on here. You can find out how much time you spend on Facebook. And it's a crying shame that if I can give Facebook an hour and I'm content with giving God 10 minutes, Come something on. is wrong. Come on. And what I'm afraid of is people are looking past the reset button and they feel it's okay. The purpose of the fast is to get, us, to get us back to where we failed at. Yes. Failing is really a good thing if you recognize it. Yes. There's nothing wrong with saying I missed the mark. Because it gives you the start place of where you can pick up at again. I'm not ashamed to say I failed. You know what? Because when I saw this last night. Immediately, I start just pressing the button. Reset me, God. Reset me again. Reset my heart. Reset my mind. So I won't be like David. That when a word that's tailor-made comes for me, I can't even recognize it. What if God sent you a word to give you that business idea you've been praying for for years? But you ain't even a place to hear it. Because it may look like it's coming from somebody that can't tell you nothing. What if God is ready to give you a greater measure of the spirit of God, but we won't hit the reset button. We want to continue to do what we've been doing and think it's okay. And miss one of the greatest experiences with God we can ever have. I need y'all in the midst of these 21 days, don't just press the button, beat on it. Start telling the God, reset me again. Reset my spirit, God. I told y'all the word heart literally means the core of your appetite. So the moment he said, Lord, reset my heart, he said, Lord, reset all my appetite. 
reset my emotional appetites. That I won't start craving for these friendships that I've been having. That keep taking me down the same road. Why do I keep picking the same type of man? Why do I keep picking the same type of woman? Why do I keep picking the same type of friend? Because we have not asked God to hit the reset button to our heart. Why haven't our intellectual abilities shifted? In other words, why do we continue to still think the same way? We haven't asked God to hit the reset button. The seat of your appetite is your soul. Your emotional state. Your intellectual state and your willpower. I'm going to be real. You want to know why we keep, we keep still snapping on folks? Because we had not asked God to hit the reset button. So we, if we don't reset, we're still resilient in our own nature. So what I don't want to be is in the shoes of David. That when God sends me a word to reset me, I cannot recognize it. So I want to give you three things that the reset does for the believer. Number one, when you ask God to reset you, the believer regains self-discipline. You regain self-discipline when you hit the reset button. So now, I ain't been able to snack on gummy bears at 10 o'clock. Because I hit the reset button with this fast. And they would sit around and eat Reese cups and sour gummies at 10 o'clock at night. And then wonder why when I get out of the bed, my back still because sugar has inflamed it. I hit the reset button. So if I go back to it, guess what? That's not God's fault. It's me not embracing the self-discipline that he's trying to set before me. So watch this. He go you another. Whatever you can't control, you conform to. <laughs> Whatever you can't control, you conform to. Fasting is God's way of allowing us to hit the reset button. God gives us the grace to correct and regulate ourselves for the sake of improvement. Self-discipline is nothing more than correction or regulation of oneself for the sake of improvement. So when you got discipline or self-discipline, you can correct yourself before God has you. All right. All right. Ooh, Jesus. You can do it. You don't have to wait till something come down the pipeline. Start getting scared when people get sick. I've been like this before. I heard when a classmate passed, so I said, man, we the same age. Now I want to start repenting. Start trying to do right. What he die from? What's he die from? Oh, Lord, I need to start exercising. But when I have self-discipline, I don't need something to come down the pipeline for me to make the correction. It's in me. And watch this. The correction is going to come from the inside out. Hence, David say, don't take my self-discipline away. Don't take the spirit away because it's the spirit of God that helps us discipline ourselves. You don't, the one scripture says it like this. You don't need a man to teach you. The Holy Ghost is going to do that for you. They used to tell us when you get it the right way. <laughs> Ain't nobody got to tell you nothing. The Spirit of God going to tell you what to do and how to go, what to put on, where to go, what to say. Now, I ain't saying I get it right all the time now because there's one thing about the Spirit of God. You can't override it. But thank God, watch this, for self-discipline. When I hit the reset button, it makes me start walking over what the Spirit of God is trying to hold me back from. So why do I need a reset, Pastor? Why, why, why? So temporary things won't hinder your eternal relationship. Y'all turn with me real quickly to 1 Corinthians 9, 24 and 20 through 27. I'm going to read it for the sake of time. I'm going to read this from the Christian Standard Bible. Watch this. 
do not do you not know that the runners in the stadium all race but only one receives the prize run in such a way to win the prize now everyone who competes exercises self-control and everything they do it to receive a perishable crown but we an imperishable crown so I do not run like one who runs aimlessly or box like one beating the air. Instead, watch this, I discipline my body and bring it under strict control. So that after preaching to others, I myself will not be disqualified. Paul is trying to tell us if a natural athlete would put him or herself through vigorous training to win a temporary title, what much more about a belief? Yeah. Verse 25 in the King James Version said like this, and every man that's striving for the mastery is tempered in all things. In other words, a man that labors fervently in an athletic competition has self-control. Watch this. Anything that God creates, the, the anything that God creates, the enemy desires to corrupt. Watch this now. If you don't have control, just like Cain, the Bible say, guess what? Sin lies at the door. In other words, the chance to miss the mark is right in front of you. And you won't recognize it because you don't have self-control. Tap yourself on the heart and say, Lord. Help me to hit the reset button. So Paul declared, hey, I don't want to live a life without purpose. I don't want to just be doing stuff. I don't want to just be going here. I don't want to just be sitting at the table with this individual. But I'm going to put my body under self, self-control and discipline that everything I do, God is going to get the glory out of. Because I know who I am. And I'm going to discipline my body. Turn with me real quick to Romans 13 and 14. Romans 8 verses 13 and 14. I'm going to read it for the sake of time. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. Shall means without a doubt. No questions asked. But changes the whole narrative of what he just said. If ye through the spirit do mortify. Notice now through the spirit. Mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Shall, without a doubt, without a question. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. If I just live off of the appetites of my flesh, I will surely die. But if I allow the Spirit of God to teach me and show me how to kill the appetites of my flesh, watch this, I shall live. Here you go. If I have self-control, I don't have to worry about being disqualified. If I have self-control, I don't have to worry about being disqualified. All right. The second key is that when a believer hits the reset button, you have the capacity to receive substance. Matthew 13, verses 3 to 8. Y'all read it. It's the parable of the souls, the four types of souls. One uh, fell by the wayside. Can I tell you, fasting pulls you from the wayside to the correct path. All right. Then another one said, uh, some fell among stony places. Fasting helps us get in a place to remove all the stony areas. In other words, all the hard areas of our life. The, the third one says, it talks about the type of seed that took root. It came up, but watch this. Thorns choked it out. Let me share something with you. Thorns don't come from the inside. I mean, from the outside. The thing that hindered the growth came from the inside. Because God gave a, 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 a rose bush a thorn for two purposes. Number one, for protection. 
And number two, on the flip side, it also prevents. What you mean? Number one, that if anything tries to get to the road bush and takes it beauty, it's going to get pricked <laughs> by the thumb. It's an act of protection. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, it also prevents people from enjoying the beauty of what the rose has provided. Mm -hmm. The scripture lets us know that we've allowed one side of that bush to work. Mm -hmm. That now it literally chokes out the production of what God wants to bring forth. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you when you hit the reset button, mm -hmm. it helps us submit our flesh that the spirit man on the inside of us can remove the thorns. Mm -hmm. So that God can be glorified and the earth can be edified through what God wants to produce through us. Mm -hmm. But the last one is what I want to focus on. Good ground. Mm -hmm. Because good ground it's able to receive substance. It's able to receive seed. Watch this. Fasting prepares you to be good ground. They used to teach us this. Break up your fallow ground. How many of y'all have heard that? You need to break up your fallow ground. I'm going to read Hosea 10 and 12 for you out of the easy read version. You can write it down. I'll read it. If you plant goodness, you will harvest Faithful love. Plow your ground. In other words, break up your fallow ground and you will harvest with the Lord. He will come and he will make goodness fall on you like rain. Plow your ground in the King James Version is nothing more than to break up fallow ground. Fallow ground is the ground that has to be plowed but left unsown for a period in order to restore it's fertility. In other words, they'll break it up and let it heal so it's ready to receive the substance of the seed. A lot of us have been broken, but we're not ready to receive seed yet. Because we had not let God take us through the complete cycle. So we're able to receive all that God has. So there's a process. That the ground has to be broken first and then there has to be a period of time where it sits there broken. I need y'all to catch it. Why? Because when you hit the reset button, the Bible tells us, such as of a broken and contrite spirit can be saved. You can receive the pureness of God when you allow yourself, watch this, to go through the broken phase. You want to know why some people start getting in the same relationships over and over. They got their heart broke and then jumped right into a relationship. Mm -hmm. They didn't give themselves mm -hmm. the fallow point. Mm -hmm. They didn't allow themselves to be broken and rest for a time so that you're able to receive the substance that God wants to give you. Can I say to you, some of y'all have went through your waiting period and God is ready to give you the substance of what you've been asking for. Yeah. But I can also hear him say, hit the reset button so you won't look right back when it comes to you. You done went through your period of resting. I'm finna reset you so I can relaunch you and give you what you've been asking me for. Which leads me to my last point. And I'm finna get ready to go. We understand now that when we hit the reset button, it gives us self-discipline. Number two, it gives us the capacity to receive substance. Watch this. Lastly, it makes us satisfied. Mm -hmm. The flesh is never satisfied. Mm -hmm. Something good, like Brother Jerome Wings that he smoked, mm -hmm. he sent me a plate with seven of them on it. <laughs> <laughs> and even though I was good and I felt full, because I didn't have control, self discipline. I wanted more and more and more to the point that I probably got gluttonous because I didn't know how to reset. Like, hey, this good. You can get some more tomorrow. I didn't know how to reset. So I wasn't satisfied. I'm here to tell you when you hit the reset button, 
God know how to discipline you. You the capacity to receive the substance. And watch this. He satisfies you. The word satisfaction is nothing more than the act of fulfilling a need, a desire, or an appetite. By resisting the urges of your flesh, your spiritual appetites should be increasing. Y'all forgive me. I ain't trying to be rude when I say this. You are a week into your fast. <laughs> Lord, help me. I'm not trying to pick at nobody. Because listen, I'm proud of everybody that's trying. I am. I, I promise you. If you made it three days and you say, Lord, that's all I can give you, I am godly proud of you. What I'm saying is that if you don't get control of the appetite, and I ain't saying it's food. I'm saying Facebook, Instagram. I'm saying folk, TV, whatever. Whatever you are denying in this season. Let's just put it like that. Because food ain't a problem for everybody. Whatever you are denying in this season, if you really embodied the fast, mm. there comes a point where your appetite to be in the presence of God is going to start getting stronger mm -hmm. than your appetite to sit at the table or whatever was feeding you. That's good. Come on. That's good. Mm. Yes, sir. I ain't saying that in a struggle. Mm. I ain't saying that because I'm going to tell you right now. I rode by Conestoga last night. I had the windows up. <laughs> And I see him <laughs> And my body said, that's beef. Where's the beef? Take me to it, Roman. Hit the blinker. Won't nobody know if you ordered it. I ain't going to lie. I'm a weekend, and I'm going to show you all how strong Facebook was on me. I'm a weekend and I still do this right here. And I'm yep. flipping like, what is that? What the F Albert? Yep. <laughs> I'm so used to folks sending me funny videos. I'm looking for my messenger. Like, hey, I ain't had a good laugh today. <laughs> and it lets me know I still need to be banging on the reset button because I'm not satisfied. <laughs> I'm not satisfied with just being in the presence of God. I'm still longing for <laughs> the thing that I'm trying to deny. I'm sorry, y'all. I wore my white shoes. I knew I was going to walk a little heavy, so I was trying to wear something that <laughs> would hurt our feelings too bad. Because I had to eat this before y'all did. I'm sorry. That's why I was weeping this morning, because I had to eat all of this before I brought it out here. I had to try to digest this for myself first. I'm not just, I'm talking to myself. I'm preaching to myself. Everybody out there, I'm just, pre this is what me and God were talking about this morning. I'm just sharing with y'all what me and God talked about. All right? So, if we don't get a hold of the appetite, we never experience true satisfaction. That's why I got 30 pair of sneakers at the house and I ain't got the two feet. Go ahead. <laughs> so I ain't got my appetite for them under control. And the flesh is never satisfied. So, if I continue to try to please it, eventually we ain't going to have no room in the closet. Uh -huh. No room upstairs. Uh -huh. Because my flesh is never satisfied. But once I buffet this body, Brother Jerome, as an athlete in a competition, I don't care what new retros come out this year. I got enough discipline to look at the athletes. Not this year, though. Not this year. I'm working. I'm working. I'm working. I'm working. Of the cool grades come out this year. I'm working. And who knows? The Lord may do something expedient. I don't know. Get that loose Reset. But for some reason, I feel like David. I feel like I'm going to be looking down on stuff that ain't got no business. Like Why? Because I'm not satisfied. I need y'all to see that. God has raised you above the stuff that you even struggle with. But if you never hit the reset button, you're going to continue to be looking down 
and stuff that's below you. I'm not saying that she wasn't fine. She just wasn't on this level. Go ahead. Go ahead. What I'm trying to tell y'all, some of the stuff that we crave, it may be good, but it ain't on our level. You got to know that God has put you above some stuff. Stop looking below. Some of y'all got to lift up your head and be ye lifted up. So the king of glory can come in and read it. To reach that some stuff in your life. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Woo, woo. My Lord. Great God. You need, because when your spiritual appetite gets strong, your need for intimate time with Him is going to start increasing. Yeah. Yeah. Why well, I used to want to sit in front of the TV and watch a game, I want to sit in front of my word. Yeah. Well, I used to, now because my appetite is growing. My desire to be in his presence increases. So for some reason, even though I'm hungry, or even though I want to do this and do that, something inside of me want to go pray. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My appetite to receive from the natural shift to me want to receive from the spiritual. And watch this. My hunger for things of this world should shift to a humility for him. I mean, Matthew 6, 31 and 34, 30, 31 through 34, and I'm done. Matthew 6, 31 through 34, and I'm done. Therefore, take no thought saying what I'm going to eat, what I'm going to drink, this this for me. What I'm wearing. When them drawings come out. I got, I got, I'm so bad I got an app on my phone. Yes, he does. I already got them. When they drop. Take no thought when the retros drop. I'm making it, make the scripture personal. Ain't nothing wrong with you doing that. Take no thought of Facebook. Take no thought of I wonder what Sister Kim posted today. Take no thought of what this individual doing that. Watch. That's good. Take no thought of none of that. For after all these things, do the Gentiles see? The people that have been engrafted into Christ. The people that can't confess. I'm in him and he's in me. Watch this. You ain't got to look for it because I, your heavenly father, knowing that ye have need of all these. I know you got to eat. I know you're thirsty. I know you love joints. I know these things. And watch this. That was that word, but. Again, it changes the whole narrative. Instead of you being worldly focused, but, and basically it can be put like this. If you would simply seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. In other words, seek to be in right standings with God. In other words, just accept Jesus and all that he's done. And all these things shall be added. Can I tell you, there's really nothing wrong with Facebook, Instagram, joins, food, all of that stuff. It's just that we got to put it in his right priority. Because when we do that, God will give you an avenue in Facebook to win something. Yes, yes. It ain't bragging when you put up that a car God gonna bless you with. Notice I said go. It ain't the house that he's gonna give you. It ain't the kids graduating college and high school. It ain't you fulfilling that desire in your heart. It's gonna be the glory that illuminates that stuff when you post it. That's gonna want people, people gonna wanna know what did 
you do. Y'all yes. know what your answer is going to have to be, and I'm done. You want to know what your answer is going to have to be in this season? You really want to know? Yeah. I hit the reset button. Yeah. So today, I want all of you, wherever you are in your home, here tangibly, I need you resting on your feet. Give me some type of, uh, I love you, Jesus. Mm. I worship you. Grab your mic, bro. We don't need that. Grab your mic, Lisa. Lord, I love you more and more each day. Come on, come on. I love you, Jesus. Go ahead, go ahead. I worship and adore you. Hallelujah. I love you more than anything. Tell the Lord you love him today. And what I want you to do, what I want you to do is, I want you to take this time and ask God to forgive you for anything that you put before him. Anything that you've given more value to, more time to, I don't care if you've given more time to your kids, your spouse, your job, shopping, food, whatever the situation may be. Ask God to forgive you and help you to prioritize by hitting the reset button. Father, I thank you today, God, that no longer will we be driven by the appetite of our flesh. Father, I ask today that everybody that's resting on their feet in their homes under the sound of my voice, that the word of God will prick their hearts. And today, God, we declare that we're going to hit the reset button. Lord, I ask that you set us anew. God, bring about a change in our lives, God. Help us to go back, God, back to the days where all we desire was the presence of God. That we didn't mind praying, that we didn't mind reading, that we didn't mind serving you, God. Awaken that spirit in us again, God. God created us a clean heart and renew a right spirit on the inside of us, God. And Lord, don't take your spirit away from us in this season, God. God, we're hitting the reset button today. God, that you can clean us from the inside out. God, that this season, when you start to pour, God, that we can retain that that you're pouring out in this hour. Father, it is my belief, God, that the oil, just as it ran from Aaron's head down his beard, God, you are pouring in this season. And God, I want to be at a place, Lord, we want to be at a place that everything that runs down, God, from the glory of your manifested presence, that we are in a praise, God, that you can fill us, God, afresh again, Lord. So, Lord, we pray today God, we confess, God, we've missed the mark in many areas of our lives. But today, God, we confess that you are the lifter of our hung down heads. God, we're not condemned because we understand there's a grace to pull us out of this situation. So, Father, we thank you for what you're going to do and how you're going to do it in this season. As we confess today, we need a reset. Lord, we ask that you resell us and set us anew. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Listen. If there's anybody that desires uh, to renew your, your status with Christ, uh, everybody here is bowed. If you desire, first of all, to give your life to Christ, if you're in the building, I need you to raise your hand. Amen. Second call, if you're in the house and you say, Pastor Fred, this message was for me. I love God, I'm saved, but I need a reset. Every head bowed, every eye closed, I need you to raise your hand. I see you, I see you, I see you. The Lord sees you. The Lord sees you. I'm raising my hand. You ain't got to look, but I'm raising my hand. Amen. I need a reset. 
I need you to repeat after me. Father, I thank you today that I am no longer held in bondage to the appetites of my flesh. I believe that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for my appetites. That when he comes back for me, I will be living a life that's reset that he can receive me. I believe that he died with all power in his hands. That he rose from the dead and took the keys from the enemy that I may be free and walk in liberty. So today, because my heart is turned towards you, I know that you're resetting me again. Oh Lord. I receive it. I embrace it. And now I declare I walk in it. In Jesus' mighty name, I declare. Amen. Come on, clap your hands right there. Look, we're about to get ready to start our purpose fair. Uh, that is going to be immediately 1130. That's a couple of minutes from now. All of you that did not attend, uh, please come up to the church. Uh, we're going to have some areas set up where you can sign up to serve in different areas of the ministry. We got a prophetic word last year that the Lord was going to uh, uh, supernaturally uh, grow the ministry. And that we should make ready our systems and strategies. So some people are saying, why you want to do all that? And we ain't even got no room for everybody to come in. Because I'm not looking at where we are. We want to have a system and a strategy for what God has taken us to. We don't ever want to be in a place that when God sends us 50 people one Sunday, that we ain't got nothing for them to do. All right? So what we're doing now is we're going to start setting stuff up. Not for where we are, but for where we're going. All right? We're going to need ushers. We're going to need uh, all kinds of stuff. Greeters, well, media people. Hey, we're going to have a table set up where you can kind of look at it, see where you want to serve, uh, sign your name up, and uh, it's going to get up, 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 and it's going to go up. So I'm so happy uh, for what God is doing. I think I got another announcement. I don't know what I'm supposed to be uh, we're gonna say we're gonna say right now from eleven thirty to twelve thirty, but we're gonna kind of like manage it. Uh, if the traffic kind of slows down, uh, we may still have to set. Um, uh, and for those that can't come, uh, we will be doing some stuff online that you can see and sign up for. Lastly, but not least, uh, I know some of y'all. I'm, I'm coming right up to this camera so I can look at. Some of y'all been watching us. Since January 21st, 2020. <laughs> and your heart says you want to be here. But you're scared to make the move. Let me help you. Come on. Come on. Come on. So I'm going to open this period now. If you desire to join us, put your face on the screen, your hand. Reach out to us and say, hey, I want to be a cop. Because the, 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 the mission of our church is we're going to apprehend every soul that does not know and understand the church. And you know what? We need a few good men on our cop force. All right. All right? We're looking for a few good men, a few good women. So look, if you've been watching us and you love what we do here, I say, come on. Come on. <laughs> if you are a, a great investor, you know, when you see something good, you got to jump on it early. That's right. Because in the stock market, they call them penny stocks at certain times. Mm -hmm. At the beginning stages, it may not be but 10 cents a stock. The problem is, if it has significant value and it has something that can fill a hole in the market, it goes from 10 cents to 20 cents to 50 cents to a dollar. Some eclipse over and turn into stuff like Microsoft. Google, 200 something dollars a share. Now, here's the thing. If you buy it at 10 cents and today it's worth 200, that means the profit is $199.90. That means off a couple of shares, you can make a good lick off of 30 cents. 
And I tell you, we may look like 30 cents. We may look like 10 cents in the eyes of some people. But our value is around that $200,000 mark for our stock. We're going to be the Microsoft and the Google of the church world. Because what we got, it can't be duplicated. It ain't going to be replicated because we ain't copycatting nobody. We ain't finna try to do what nobody else done. We just going to authentically be what God want us to be. So the best thing is to jump on with us at the ground level. That's all I got to say. I love y'all. You are dismissed. Yeah.